This time, we're gonna automate that gate to get it into Home Assistant so I can do this. <laughs> Over the phone. I know. Yeah, it's a big one this time. Well, actually it's really simple, but it just took a really long time because there's a lot of steps involved. So this gate is now automated and it's in a home assistant so I can open it with my phone. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly all the steps and all the components of, that are part of it. So why would you wanna automate your gate? Well, it's nice that it opens you know, with a fob, but also because I can get it into Home Assistant so I can open it from anywhere. So that if I can see who is there, I can open it remotely, which is one of the reasons, but I can also automate it. So for example, down the line, say I got a number plate reader, I could automate that based on the number plate of the car that's coming in. So stuff like that, I'd really like to do, but first I'm gonna show you how it was all installed. So that's a lot of digging, it's a lot of cabling, and then I'll run you through the whole setup and the whole uh, integration and how I did it, and maybe you can get some use from that. But first up, let's go digging. Okay, we're gonna have to dig some trenches because all the cabling obviously has to go on the ground, which is why I have Chris and Gusty here to help me. You can hear Gusty's machine in the background, he's digging trenches. Now, I'm not gonna do this myself because who knows what's in the ground, that's why he's here. Huh, use professionals for stuff like this. And um, I also have my builder Tony here, it's gonna help us put all the cabling in conduit and also put the goosenecks up for where the pin pad's gonna be. So there's a whole lot of construction work that needs to happen now before we can actually attach things, the gate to the gate, uh, the gate opener to the gate control box and to home assistant. So uh, yeah, I'll give you a quick montage of what that looks like and then we'll continue. Gusty's done digging, so we got a hole here where there's going to be one keypad on a gooseneck pedestal thing, metal thing. And it goes in through the Aggies here, Agapanthus, called Aggies in Australia. And then it goes over to, ugh, it's even full in the hole, there's that other trench. So that goes from the batteries here in the solar panel all the way down there. So let me show you that. Over here. And that goes down too. There's the trench coming down. There's a bit of a Crossing here and that's gone downhill and up again to not have water collect here because water's bad. Control box is going to be right here somewhere on that post on the upside here. There's going to be a fence here, there won't be a gap here, that's going to be a fence. And then the wiring needs to go across the driveway here because the other gate opener obviously is on this pole here. So there's going to be a gate opener to open the other gate. And then it goes around here and down there. And this trench here goes down to the other entry keypad and the G4 doorbell from Unify. Well, that's the plan right now anyway. So another gooseneck right there. Um, so yeah, a lot of trenching done. <sighs> what next? So first step has been to uh, set up like a test bed, test rig kind of thing to make sure we can actually get all this to work, um, which it does now. So the actual gate opener is working. Um, we haven't attached any of the smarts like the doorbell or the home assistant integration. That's not yet. This is just the gate opener to make sure that that works. Um, so there's a fob, there's a keypad, uh, but let me just give you a little bit of a closer look at how it's all connected. So that's the control box. 
That thing here is the actual control module that sits inside the box. Uh, the reason it's so big is that there's room for a battery and a solar controller, but I have that elsewhere, as you might have seen in another video. So in here is uh, a bunch of wires, obviously. These two here are connected to the gate openers. That goes to, um, well, it comes from the battery, goes in there, and this comes out if you need 12 volt for something. And these are all the, um, I guess, signal wires that does everything. So the first one is 12 volt, then there's a ground, and then, if you can see anything here, this is where everything is connected now. So here we've got the antenna that works with the fob, but I've got an extended antenna. So in here is wired a, uh, the long range antenna receiver and transmitter and we've got the keypad as well wired in here into the two side, the comm, um, etc. So that's wired in and then here is the long range receiver thing. So that's because the house is so far away from the gate, we need a long range. And here's the keypad that's also wired in and programmed. And of course, let me just zoom out. Here are the two actuators that goes on the gates, which are connected into there. So, fob you can see here if i press a then that sends a signal to the long range transmitter and pressing they start going so now it looks a bit weird because they're supposed to be attached to a gate obviously that's why they turn around round, round out there normally they just push out and also i have here if i press in the code a very secret code there you go and hash, there you go, they start again and they go back in. So that all works and obviously it's going to be not wired up exactly like this, there's going to be much longer wires etc, but first step. Whew. All right, time for the big install. Um, got Connor and Tony here to help me out because installing hardware or actual gate actuators it's not my thing and I want to make sure they're absolutely straight and, and, and precise and accurate and work perfectly. So um, <laughs> that's out of my comfort zone. So they're here to help me out. Uh, we're going to do a bunch of wiring to get it all hooked up and there's even a Wi-Fi module that I'm going to use for Home Assistant integration. So that will be an interesting part of it. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a kit I bought but I'm obviously customizing it to make sure it works in just this case. Um, and we'll see what happens. I'm not entirely sure. But um, at least you don't have to watch it all. You can just watch this montage of it being installed. Let me walk you through the whole setup now that it's installed. So I'm going to start here with the solar panel. So I have installed this a long time ago for all the gubbins that are here, the camera, the Wi-Fi access point and the nano station. But now that solar panel is also charging much bigger batteries here, which are now also going to be powering the gate mechanism. Yeah. So that's where I'm going to start and I'm going to take you for a ride. So Apologies if you get seasick, but um, here we go. All right, let me, let me get you. So, under this bucket here, we have the massive batteries, um, and it's all connected. Like, there's water there, so I'm actually not gonna just take it off just now. But here's another video linked there, which will show you the new batteries. So, under here, we have wiring going in. So that's not 100% completed yet. There's still a little bit of wiring finagling to do, but you might be able to see that there's a separate piece of conduit there with two wires. This is me having an afterthought going, oh, I better future proof this somewhat. So that's a Cat6 cable, the blue one, and that's just a normal power slash signal wire, the white one, and they go all the way down the front just in case I need them. They're not hooked up yet. So, but here's where the power and the uh, doorbell powers, that's a different video, it's coming soon, hopefully, in the future. Um, they're going in here, so that's the power. And then you can see there's a piece of conduit there that goes in that way, and then there's one that goes down there. So this one here, going that way, is for the goosenecks. Let me just show you that. Go through the Aggies here. 
Hello, flowers. Dog. Hey, dog. Okay, so here's the first keypad um, that is hooked up to the gate, and there's two of those. So this gooseneck here, I had to have custom made, put in the concrete. That's where the conduit goes. It goes up here. Um, and that's the keypad, and you can put in your pin code or whatever. That's not a valid one. Um, so that's part of it. That's well, that's the first keypad. And then behind the Aggies here, there's a trench, as you saw before on the video. Goes all the way down here. Pretty flowers. And in through here, you can see we've now covered it up. That's where the trench comes in. All covered up here, and that goes in the control box. And I'll come back to the control box. And then there are two gate actuators here. And there's one on the other side. And they're also, they go into this piece of conduit here, which comes out the ground, and in the control box. And the other side of it here is another piece of conduit. Um, oh, shady, sorry. And that's the left-hand actuator there, also powered through that. And there's the wiring coming down there into the piece of conduit in the ground. And then, if I get the phone here, We can now, if you can see that, hopefully, I'm going to press the phone there, and then the gate opens. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. So out here, that comes down here, again, we covered up the conduit, and that goes in to this keypad here. So that's the entrance, so if you drive in, that is roughly where your window is going to be, depending on the height of your car. Now you may have noticed something hanging here. That is for the G4 doorbell. Um, I'm waiting on a part, that's going to be in a separate video, but that's going to be my intercom for ringing the doorbell. So I'm going to use the G4 doorbell for that, that's going to be interesting. Um, the gates will auto close after a minute. So let me show you the control box here and how that all works in together. So, this is the interesting bit, I think. This is the long range receiver that you saw this, you know, before when I was testing it. And then this bit here is where all the signal wires come in. So, the two keypads, the Wi Fi dongle, um, and the long range antenna all go into this module here. So, there's underneath, but that's all hooked up to. The antenna, then there's a two side signal. So, guess because I've got two gates, this also works with one gate. There's a, um, a signal or a normally closed, um, normally open. Can't remember now, but it's the signal. <laughs> and then there's the power here, which is the, uh, the, the ground and the, and the positive for the DC power. And then the power from the battery comes in here, right there. That's where the battery power comes in. And then when I get 240 volts down here, eventually the power will be up in there. I have a power brick for that. That will come in there. So that's kind of neat. And here is the left gate uh, opener powered and the right power as well as signal. Um, and it's all by this Queensland company called BMG, which is there, which have been crazy helpful super helpful with all my research support all my silly questions about everything because i needed to be um, suited to my nerdy needs and then finally here is the wi-fi module so i bought this on oh dear amazon ebay for about 25 bucks and this is a sonoff um, power so it goes into the ewe link app or ewe link i'm not sure how to pronounce it but all that is is just the same as up here there it has a signal and normally closed or open. Again, I can't remember exactly which one I used. And then there's power down here from the DC. And then you can power it with all sorts, AC, DC, even a micro USB there. And it's just a relay, switch relay. Um, so let me just show you in the, well, I'll show you now both in the UE Link app as well as Home Assistant, how that's all um, set up so I can use my phone. But this, um, really neat oh someone did mention why all the cables in there well 
I want to make sure I don't need more cabling before I start cutting it off. So I usually leave it for a couple of months before I clean it up, just so I have peace of mind that everything is where it should be. But uh, yeah, all right, let's jump into Home Assistant uh, and the technical side of things, and I'll show you that. Okay, so before we get into Home Assistant here, let me just show you first the UE Link app, or EWE Link. I still don't know how to pronounce that right. Um, the Sonoff platform, which is a whole range of different devices. I have some switches here that I switch my water pump on and off. You can see them here. This is ball pump power and transfer pump switch. Those are Sonoff devices. And this particular Wi-Fi device that I've used for the gate is the same platform, which makes it really simple. So all I had to do was press the plus down there and that would do quick pairing and then that would find it and just put it into the platform. Now there was a caveat. This particular Wi-Fi board or board with a Wi-Fi on there only works on 2.4 gigahertz. And because I have reasonably good coverage, I had to find a place where my phone would not go on 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, but on 2.4. Otherwise I could not adopt it into the UE, uh, UE Link platform. Now, once it's in there, it's really simple to get it into Home Assistant. All you have to do is go to your integrations and you see I've already got some Sonoff uh, integrations here but all you do is you add integration, you type in Sonoff there and you add the IP address. Um, so you actually the account credentials of your Uelink account rather and then because they're all on that account when you refresh Home Assistant they're just there. It's really cool. So I just added another one. I refreshed Home Assistant and it showed up. So now I have five devices in here. One of them being the gate switch. Very cool. Now I had one problem. There was one problem I had to figure out. And that was that if I opened the gate with the switch down there, the, the Wi-Fi switch on the actual in the gate control box, it wouldn't turn off again. Right? So the switch would just turn on here and then it would stay on where what the way the relay works is it switches on and off and that's how it opens the gate so the thing i had to do was that in the ue link ue link oh god i'm messing that up <laughs> um go into the device and then under the settings there is something called inching settings i'd never heard of this but the inching settings is that it turns off again. So it turns, it says when inching mode is enabled, the device will automatically turn off after being on for a while after each start. That's the one I had to use. So in this case, I've added that in the EWE link at, app. I may be able to do it in Home Assistant, but I haven't tried. And then you choose the time it stays on before it turns off again. And that's exactly the setting I needed for my gate. But then once that was done, it was really simple. And if you have an Android device, which I do, I'll show you here. I added a widget, which is the gate. And to do that on Home Assistant, now it depends on your launch on Android, but I have the standard Google one. Go to widgets, choose a service button, like that. And then the settings will come up for it. And then you can choose the service. So in this case, it's a switch service and it's turned on because remember, it's always gonna turn off again. That's with the inching settings. So it's always turned on. And then the entity ID is just the one. Now Sonoff, for some reason, decides to put in just the actual Sonoff whatever code. <laughs> I don't know what the name is coming from. So you need to know which is which, but this is the gate one. You can uh, change the, the, the icon. So for example, gate, and put a gate on there. Select that, you can give it a label. We can call it gate or something. And then you can choose the widget theme and require authentication. If you need to log in, if it's a sensitive thing, you can require authentication, but I don't in this case. And you just add the widget and I got now have two gates, but you get the idea. That's how you add a widget. And then now I have a quick button to just press and it'll open the gate through Home Assistant. That's kind of cool. So um, yeah, really easy to set up as it turned out. So um, that was the last part of it, getting that um, board in with the Wi-Fi, connected that to the control unit, the control box on the gate, and obviously connect that to the Wi-Fi here so that there is internet connection for that board. And now I can open the gate through Home Assistant, which means I can automate it and I can do integrations and stuff. It's kind of cool. Yeah. That's the full setup. That's the gate. 
you got keypads, I got fobs, um, I got home assistant integration. It, it all just works. And that was what I wanted. I wanted everything in the one solution. Because Khan, why else use home assistant, right? If we're not gonna take advantage of the automation part of it, at least eventually. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're installing a gate, let me know. Are you also using home assistant? Or is there anything else that I missed? Is there something I could have done better? In any case, I'm looking forward to uh, getting the doorbell done. But also now I can actually use the gates. They've literally been years in the making. Um, so it's kind of exciting. It's a big moment. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing. If you did, uh, give it a thumbs up and comment below what you might be using your gate setup for or anything else. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye for now.